Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use color range and focus area to make selections in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Whoa. Whoa. It's like skydiving. Whoa. That was me skydiving from a not very high place. Um, anyway, so Photoshop is all about making selections and allowing you to do different things within those selections. And fortunately, it gives you loads of different ways of doing it. I'm working through each of those. Today, we're going to be looking at the color range and focus area tools that will allow you to focus on different things and um, make selections in Photoshop. Now remember, there's no correct right or wrong way of making selections in Photoshop. There's so many different tools in here because every single image works differently and there's different uses and different ways of making selections. So whichever one works for your image is the best one. If one doesn't work, then try a different method. So let's jump in today and let's look at these that we're working with. So first of all, let's use color range. So let's say we want to select the yellow car. Okay, really simple, really nice and bright colors. So we can see color range would probably work with this. So first of all, let's just duplicate this layer. So Command J duplicates it. Oh, Command J duplicates it. There we go, we weren't in Photoshop. And then we go select color range. Now inside color range, we have all sorts of different things going on. So let's work through them. Now, the first thing is the view that you get. Now, the view that you get, grayscale is my favorite because it shows you what is and is not selected. Anything white has been selected, anything black has not been selected. So let's quickly select the car, for example. So I just did that by clicking on it. We'll go over how I did that in a second. But let's just work through these. You've got grayscale, black matte. Now, essentially, everything black is not selected and anything which is matte or the color that you've selected, you can see through it so you can see all the yellow car. White matte works the same thing, but it's against white, so that would work for darker colors. Yellow is too bright really to use this. And Quick Mask essentially just uses the, the, the red tone or whichever tone you have for Quick Mask. mask. So my favorite is grayscale because it's really simple to see exactly what you're doing. So. Now what we have is a few different options. Now up here, you can quickly go for things like reds. It will select anything in the red area or the yellows. So you can see it's got my yellows there. Now I don't actually find these that helpful because the range is so specific and see yellows. It's got loads of other things in there. Unless you were working with, so this is to change colors, but if you wanted to work with an image and just work within the yellows in an image, or the greens or the cyans in the entire feeling or tone of an image, then this is massively powerful for your selections using these areas. But for what we're doing today, it doesn't really work. Now, the next thing that we have is massively powerful as well, highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if you want to just edit highlights in an image, you literally select that and it's gonna output your highlights. And then you can do the same for the midtones and the same things for your shadows. So it means that you can do all sorts of different things within the color range without you even selecting anything. The final thing is skin tones. And actually, if you've got an, a person inside your um, document, it does a very, very good job of making this selection. Um, and then you can have detect faces on or off. Now, if you have it on, essentially what that does is it will only select the actual people as opposed to the tone. So for example, here we've got skin tones down here. If we had a person in the middle of this, it would essentially select their face and it wouldn't select these areas. Deselect that and it will select everything in the whole image. And that's pretty much it. Out of Gamut, this is very high level stuff. That's essentially anything which whatever you've got is dialed in for your print settings. It won't be able to print those colors, but we won't get into that today. We're gonna use sampled colors, which is the very top one. This allows you to make the selections. Now, you've got two sliders underneath this and they do very different things, okay? Now, for example, fuzziness relates to the color. So let's just go and click on this yellow. 
Okay, so what that does is it tells you that if, if you go all the way down to the very bottom, what it does is it's specifically that exact pixel that you clicked on, it looks for that exact color of yellow or the sky, um, that exact color of blue. If you go the opposite direction, go all the way up, what it does is it looks for ones similar to it, so in the blues or in the yellows, which are more similar, so it's gonna select more items. So essentially, more refined, less refined, and you're gonna to wanna to play around with that per image. Somewhere in the middle works fine for me. Range, now this essentially, if you were to imagine a circle, and it's most intense in the middle, and it fades out the selection. What that, is like a radial filter. So when you make a selection, you basically go, oh, I want, if I have my range really small, wherever I select, only yellows in that area are selected. If I go really big, or 100%, it looks at 100% of the image, and it looks for that color of yellow. So you can see how these two sliders work with each other. Now, the power sits in these three things over here, your eyedropper tool. So I can make one click and go, cool, it selected those yellows, over the entire range of the image and you know 96 degrees of that color or, or areas of that color it goes up to 200. Um, so that, that's you know that's pretty good it's made a good selection of the car but not a perfect selection of the car at all it's got all, missing all the shadows and everything so instead what we can do is we can hit plus and then we can go around and click and it will keep on adding those elements now this is now really powerful, but because we've got the range all the way up, it's now picking up the other car. So instead we can bring the range back, we'll bring it back to just make one selection, and then we're gonna bring the range all the way down, and then hit plus, and now what I can do is I can work around this. As I click, you see it's just gonna use a smaller area around the outside. Now as I get close to the other side, I can bring that range back even more, okay? As I click, and you can see, maybe somewhere in the middle of that, it's doing a, a lot better job. There we go, I've got some of the floor in there. I'm not that worried. I can always hit Command Z to go back and I, a, a section. Okay, that's pretty good to me. Now I know I've also got some yellows back here, but you can see it's brought in all of these trees. Now, I can hit minus, and then I can click on the trees and these elements, and it's gonna then get rid of those tones in the area. So I think that's a pretty good job. I've made a quite an amazing selection pretty quickly of this car. Now you can see you can actually do that in about five clicks. Now you have a choice for what you do. So then you hit okay, and it's gonna bring it into this. Now all I have to do is if I hit layer mask down here, click on that, hide the background layer, you can see it's just saved the car as its own layer. Now this is now hugely powerful, because watch this. I can now take this, I can go to color balance, and the most important thing I need to do is click this button here, which clips this onto just that layer, which I've got that selection made in. And now watch, I can go through and I can actually change the color of the car. So we could, for example, go, okay, I want it to go somewhere, I want it to be more like that car next to it. Okay, let's come into the shadows. So I'm doing it each individual channel here. Okay, too far. Got some yellow still in there in the highlights. But now we've made a nice change and we've completely changed the color of the car just by using color selection. And you can see really how powerful this is. Massively powerful and really quick to use. So that there is how to use the color selection tool. But now let's try and use that on another image to show you where it wouldn't work. Here we have this apple, okay? So you can probably see lots of green tones here. So now if we duplicate Command J, and then we go select, and we'll go for color range. And now watch when I go into any of these areas. If I select, say, the apple, it's selected literally everything around it as well. Remember, anything that's white is selected. So I can't select, no matter what I do within this, I can change the range, make it really low, you know, change the fuzziness, 
no matter what I do, by going around here, I'm getting all of my background involved in this. And that's because the apple and everything is in the same color range. So that wouldn't work. But now let's have a look at the other option that I've got, select focus area. Now this for me is a bit hit and miss, it's not perfect. But if you open focus area, you get this dialogue and you see this little spinning ring here. This is it analyzing the image and it's gonna go through and it's actually gonna find best the focus area of the image. And then preview mode, we can change it to black and white. So you can see now what's happened is it selected just the apple. There we go, let's look at it on white. And I have literally pressed nothing. So you've now got a few options that you can use within this. You can tell it if there's any noise in the image so it can reference it differently, or you can change the in focus range. Move it up, more things are in focus. Move it down, less things are in focus, and it's always gonna analyze it. Now, say this is, I'm happy with it, but I don't want these leaves up here and here. Now I can hit minus, and I can literally scrub over that Spinning wheel is going to happen, it's going to analyze the image again, and it's going to basically go, okay, let's look for any other items that are within there. And you can see it's made a great job of doing this, but it's added some things in up here. It's not perfect, but you can see I can go through and really refine this just by selecting. There we go, and when you draw in an area, it really doesn't, it analyzes it for lines and all sorts of things. And so now, say I'm happy with that, I now have a choice of how I output this. I can just output it as a layer mask, but I could also say have a new layer with layer mask, which is really great. So I could do this, it's gonna give me another layer, and it's gonna put it on a layer mask for me. And I can come all the way in and I can see that it has done a phenomenal job of cutting out this. And we, can, we know that because if we create a new layer, Command Shift N, and let's fill this with orange, so that's what I had selected. So as you can see, this has done an almost perfect job of selecting this apple, which was on a completely green background, using the focus range tool inside Photoshop. Absolutely amazing, considering it was on a green background. So you can see there that using different selection tools do completely different things. Remember, not all selection tools work on all things inside Photoshop, so figure out which one works best for your particular image. Now, if you wanna get these project files, then you can download them all from photosyncolor.com. Just head over there, the link is in the description. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe as I have loads more videos coming out in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosyncolor.com. Theme tune.